Oh, watchdog man, one day your time will come, and I'll be there. Oh, hey guys, how are you doing? That's, that's, <laughs> you, you ever do that? You just leave your Tonka Bonds all over your bed while your webcam's turned on and you make an embarrassing moment between them? It happens to the best of us, right? Uh, okay, so the S-Class, the very paragon of epicness made manifest. Um, also, you got Moomin Rider and Amai Mask and Sonic and Fubuki and Saitama on there too, but just disregard them, okay? Nobody watches One Punch Man to find out what's going on with Saitama, alright? We watch mostly because of Metal Bat. Most of the entirety of Season 1 was complete garbage up until the last three episodes where Metal Bat makes his debut. Am I right or am I right? Of course. So, earlier this week, I made a video about Metal Bat, and uh, during that course of the video, I started to realize, you know, a lot of the S-Class seem to be skirting on that edge of monsterfication or obsession because in the One Punch Man universe obsession is something that could easily lead to the monster transformation you got to be very careful about how these emotions can be warped and twisted in various ways right so um, one of my fans a, a guy by the name of Melvin left a comment on the last video on the Metal Bat video talking about all the different S classes like obsessions the things that they're you know if they were gonna get turned into monsters that's what they would be because of and I looked at that list and I thought it was a really cool list and I started to think I was gonna make a video just about that list but then I thought you know if there's something that just makes me giddy, something that makes me super excited and just tickled to make a video, uh, aside from geography, it's themes, okay? I love it whenever an author introduces a group of characters and there's an underlying theme to them, and sometimes the author will explain what the theme is and what each of them represent, and the other times it's left all up to the fandom, okay? So a good example of this is the Espada from Bleach, and it was eventually explained that the Espada represent various aspects aspects of death how humans die like there's greed and insanity and loneliness and all that stuff represent the espada i i just eat that stuff up i love it i was playing persona 5 a few months ago and i started to realize about like you know two or three palaces in i'm like oh the palace masters represent the seven deadly sins oh my god i love this game so much um so now murata and uh, murata and one have never come out and said that like the s class heroes you know tatsumaki represents this definitively puri puri prisoner well we know what Puri Puri Prisoner represents definitively, uh, but they've never come out and said it. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to make my own list of what I think each S-Class hero represents. Okay, so I wanted to give a shout out to Melvin, though, because he was the one that gave me the original idea for this. Some of these, their obsessions are going to line up with what I think they represent, uh, but not all of them. Uh, like, for example, Pig God represents gluttony, and also his obsession is gluttony, so those kind of link up. Uh, speaking of that, I could very very well have lined up all of them with like the seven deadly sins I mean obviously there's like 16 17 s class if you include blast which by the way we're not including blast here because we have no idea who the guy is uh, so we're just talking about the 16 s class right here but if I wanted to I could include you know the seven deadly sins quite easily I think you can make well obviously pig god is gluttony you can make a case that metal bat represents wrath uh, you could have lust be puri puri prisoner um, I'm thinking envy I was thinking envy actually that would probably fit for Fubuki more than any other character, but she's not S-Class. So, the representations I have here, some of them are Seven Deadly Sins, some of them are just character traits, like, uh, you know, like, arrogance or ego or something like that. Others are, like, virtues. So, they're kind of all over the place, but I just tried to figure out, like, okay, if I was gonna look at this character, like, Metal Knight, what's the one word I can think of that represents Metal Knight and his message? Okay, so that's basically how I went with this, and I'd like to see your take on this too. If you don't agree with me on certain uh, characters, let me know which other words or what other uh, themes would fit that character, okay? So let's start this all off with the uh, ambiguous lolly character, Tatsumaki. Tatsumaki is a fairly easy one, uh, and it's one of the few that I also lined up perfectly with Melvin's list, and it's arrogance. I mean, you really can't look at her in any other way other than that, alright? There has been multiple times in the series where she's basically just said, you know, 
Just let me do what I need to do. Just let me take care of everything myself. I can handle whatever you throw at me. Every time a monster appears in front of her, uh, she's like, you know, I, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your threat level is. I'm just going to end your existence right now. Um, she's very, very prideful of her own abilities and to the point where she basically thinks she's invincible. In fact, I would definitely go that way with Tatsumaki. Um, you know, later on in the webcomic, eh, but definitely right now where we're at from all the battles we've seen up until this point in the Murata version anyway that's really had her struggling or like oh no I don't know if I'm gonna be able to beat this person you know and the entire the entire ride the entire battle she always like strikes the epic just dominance poses and stuff and she's just like I'm awesome and I know I'm awesome so I will defeat you now because my power is just absolute so she is definitely full of arrogance 100% alright there's really no other debate on that at least from my perspective maybe you could view her another way. Um, another way of looking at this is, and I mentioned this in the Metal Bat video, her relationship with Fubuki. Okay, Fubuki is no slouch when it comes to psychic powers, okay? They're not nearly on the level of Tatsumaki's power, but still, she can defend herself, and she's pretty strong in her own right. And yet, whenever Tatsumaki sees her, she's immediately like, you know, Fubuki, you're, you're gonna be useless here, just go home and let me protect you. Uh, that's a pretty warped way of loving your sister. It's not the same thing exactly as hatred, because you figure if that was the case, she just wouldn't care one way or the other if her sister stayed or left, if she just hated her. So she does care about her, but it's because of this insane level of arrogance. She's just like, yeah, whatever, you got psychic powers, I don't care if, I I I'm better than you. I'm just automatically better than you. We all know I'm better than you. Just let me deal with it. You go home. I'm gonna take care of all the monsters myself. Pretty much her attitude on it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's Tatsumaki. Okay, so, moving on to S-Class rank 3, we got Bang. Now, Bang is, you got a lot of stuff with Bang. I thought about honor. I thought about just uh, respect as another one. I actually ended up giving respect to another hero, but I decided to um, land on responsibility. That's what Bang or Silver Fang represents, okay? He is uh, a master of a dojo, and he is, you know, he feels like himself as, like, kind of like the parental figure. He is responsible for his, you know, the, his students. Um, even kind of like that tough love thing he gave Chenrocco. He knocked him down and just beat the crap out of him, basically, because he's like, listen... I gotta leave now, and I gotta go hunt Garo. Something else. Major responsibility. He looks at Garo as, like, his problem. You know, for a little while there, I, I think just because the trope is so common, I uh, automatically assumed that Silverfang was Garo's grandfather. Am I the only one that thought that? It was kind of like a Mandela effect sort of thing. I think I might have even brought it up in a video, like, a really, really long time ago, and people were responding like, Matt, Garo is not related to... Silverfang, and I'm like, he isn't? And it's just like, I'm so conditioned for it to be like, I am the grandfather. He is my grandson who's acting up. I have to put his, I have to settle his hash. You know, like, but that's not the case. They're not related. So it's just because he is his master, his previous master, Garo, he feels this deep responsibility to deal with the problem, even at the cost of his own life. He has to deal with this. So I landed on that that responsibility. I think that kind of I think that represents Silverfang quite a bit as his as he's a teacher of the fist of flowing water crushing rock and also the one that has to try to, you know, he feels it necessary to, you know, take take out Garo, even if killing him is necessary, right? So that's the situation there. As for Atomic Samurai, he's the one I landed on with respect. Also, honor, you could take it that way. Um, he follows the way of the sword. You can tell he definitely doesn't do it loosely. Uh, he respects Silverfang, which I believe is the reason Atomic Samurai really joined the Hero Association to begin with, because Silverfang joined, and he's kind of like, ah, I respect Silverfang. I will also join this to kind of follow his, in, in his footsteps and everything like that, you know, because this seems like it's a it's an up and up organization, I guess, if Silverfang's part of it, right? Um, also, the time that we saw him, you know, in that little group of, like, swords masters all over the world, and then you had uh, the other samurai that went crazy with the monster transformation, and he's just like, I'm just gonna slice you down very quickly, you know? It's just a very, very cold, very clean, very just respectful and honorable way of just ending, you know, their lives and stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't revel in the battlefield, he doesn't like, oh yes, the blood is everywhere, dancing on my blade! Not really the kind of character he is, so I would definitely go with respect, honor, with Atomic Samurai. Moving on to S-Class rank 5, we have Child Emperor. Uh, Melvin's list included this, just psychopath. And I'm like, yeah, 
Yeah, kinda, but I ended up settling on frustration, is what Child Emperor represents, okay? Because many times in the series, you get the feeling that he's like, he's an absolute genius, but he's encumbered by his age and his, his small body, so there's many times where he's in the middle of a fight and you feel like, oh, if, if only I was a little bit older, if only I had this or whatever, I had more time or something, I would be better at this, uh, but I, I don't, I'm just stuck at that, I'm, I'm a boy genius and there's negatives to that because I'm like a 10-year-old and I have all these crazy ideas and everything. It's just my physical power isn't up to snuff a lot of times with that. Um, in the last fight we had with him and uh, Phoenix Man, we saw that where he busted out all of his tricks and everything against Phoenix Man and none of them worked. And at the very end of it, he was moved to tears because he's just like, I can't believe I have to resort to my super mecha awesome Megazord in order to fight you. That's my best work and I have to use it on a freaking like a lower, you know, enemy. I can't I don't even use it on a Condra. Like, this sucks, man. This sucks. So, I, I was like, during that scene, I was like, what does he represent? I don't know, being a bratty little kid. You know, like, I, I, I can't really say that, though. I'm just like, more frustration. You know, frustration in a lot of things. Frustration with Metal Knight, and Metal Knight won't help them. Frustration with the other heroes, because Child Emperor's the one, he's the tactician. He's the one that pretty much comes up with the plan. It's just like, okay, Team A, Team B, Team C, we all do this. You go there, you go there. And then, because of the way the S-Class operates, Parade, as well as a my mask there's nobody wants to do it his way they all have to do it other ways and there's like a frustration they're like guys I'm smarter than all of you. I know what to do. Just do what I tell you and then a my mask comes up and he's like yeah but you're not gonna have me be on standby right and it's like God, freaking fine fine you can come in too <laughs> you know so it's it's sort of like that I think that represents him quite well moving on now to metal knight uh, metal knight is apathy. So you have empathy, which is the ability to care and understand, you know, other people's feelings and, you know, oh, I feel for you. I really do. And then apathy, complete opposite of that. Indifference coldness. Uh, he doesn't connect other people. He stays sequestered in his little lab. He never even goes to the S-Class meetings. Doesn't even care what they're about. If he does need to go or send something, he just sends a robot, um, you know, to, to talk for him or whatever that stuff, or sends an email to the Hero Association. Does not care about a child being kidnapped and held hostage in the Monster Association, even though he knew exactly where he was being held. He wouldn't divulge that information to Child Emperor. Uh, doesn't really seem to care at all like that. He's just a cold, calculating scientist. And his goal is to build better and b bigger and better machines that are stronger, that can deal with the monster threat. You know, like, for example, uh, for, for example, for example, for example, when uh, Elder Centipede, Cent Centachoro, was attacking the town, I think it was City S, and it was just leveling the place. And, you know, there were buildings getting toppled over by this thing, and people were running all over the place. You know, um, Metal Knight didn't really seem to care all that much about the damage. He was more concerned about getting a sample of Centachoro for his weapons. Now, he did land land and there was a uh, Mohican and there was pineapple the heroes that were running away and he kind of lands and he's like you guys should get out of here but he didn't say that because he was concerned really for their well-being or anything it was more just like hey listen I'm trying to do like weapons testing here right now so you're you're can you just get out of the way you're just annoying me right he didn't really seem like you guys oh my god there's a giant centipede monster you need to get out of here at once didn't really seem like he cared for their well-being and then the kid ended up getting kidnapped anyway and then of course you had the whole conversation he was having with Child Emperor, which I guess I should give you the full context of that, really what Metal Knight was saying was, if I tell you where the child is being captured, uh, is being held, right, and the S-Class all go in there to rescue him, and the Monster Association wipes out all the S-Class, then the world is without defense from all the other monsters. If I don't tell you, then that hostage will die. But he's more of the way that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. You know, that that's the way that Bofoy really views the world. He's just like, yeah, well, you know, uh, if I tell you where he is, you guys go in there and get massacred. At least this way, you know, a hostage might die, but it's just one person as opposed to all the strongest warriors in the, in the world. So, I mean, but it, there's definitely a level of apathy there. So I would I would go with him. OK, he's more cold and calculating. That's that's what Metal Knight is. All right. So then moving on to King Goo. Uh, King had a few of them. I thought about uh, deceit or just lying. Um, I thought about cowardice, but I decided to settle on uh, guilt. 
Okay, I think more than the deceit that he, you know, implores, you know, he's just, well, it's funny because even King at some points, he kind of wants to come clean to the world. Um, but I think it's just the massive amounts of guilt that all these heroes look to him as the strongest, even the other S class. Um, she, he even got the, you know, uh, approval of Tatsumaki, which not an easy thing to get. Um, you know, and despite all of that, though, he himself knows that if push comes to shove and an actual serious threat plagues the world, he can't do anything to help that. Can you imagine the guilt that that guy has to feel? Like, a dragon level threat is destroying the town. Screw it, a god level t a threat is destroying the world. And all the other S-Class are defeated. And the rest of the world are looking on to King. And they're like singing his praises. And they're like praying, King, please. And King is just like, can't do anything. Now, this is One Punch Man. And King always manages to come out okay. So knowing King's luck, like he would walk over to this giant Godzilla monster, leveling the entire world, just burning the whole place down. And King just... King Roaring Cannon! And then at that exact time, a freak meteor would just hit the freaking Godzilla and then fall down. Like, cause that's the way, that's the way it goes. But still, because, you know, King is sometimes is not even aware of how things just work in his favor. So in that case, I still think, yeah, the tremendous amount of guilt he feels eats away at him more than anything. And that's really what he represents. You know, everyone thinks he's awesome and he's the best and he really isn't. Okay, and he knows he isn't. It's, it, he doesn't let it go to his head. He doesn't let it get him in like an ego where he's like, I really am the best hero that ever lived. You know, come here, kids. Let me take a pose as the awesome hero I am. No, he's just like, hey, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy. King, you're the greatest hero. Yeah, I'm not really. I'm not really a hero, but okay. You know, so that's the, that's what King represents. Okay, moving on to S class number eight we have zombie man uh zombie man i decided to go with obsession all right so we had the obsessions from melvin's list but we have like just ob obsession no is zombie man's thing uh what obsession obsession with the house of evolution because they're the ones that created him okay and there's kind of a whole like frankenstein and frankenstein's monster sort of thing going on here uh because dr genus had this immortality series and that's how he was created but then he had like a disdain for the house of evolution for what their goals were and what they were doing to the point where regardless of what intel it is uh whatever threat I think plagues the world at the current moment, Zombie Man will immediately jump to it being the House of Evolution. Because he did that. He's just like, monsters popping up everywhere. There's only one organization this could be. Like, he's not even thinking of other options. He's just like, no, no. It has to be the House of Evolution. It has to be the one that, you know, messed with me and experimented on me to make this immortal zombie. It, it has to be them. I think it's just because he's just, maybe he, he has a disdain for his own body. I mean, I'm sure any kind of character that's immortal always kind of you know wants to die at some point you know just like i wish it could just end um but in the case with zombie man i think it's just like he has so much of an obsession for the house of evolution he views them as the ultimate threat of humanity it doesn't the organization monster association no 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 they're just small chump change compared to the house of evolution and it's funny because the house of evolution is now effectively defunct but he still is like no no that can't be the case you're plotting something i know you are it's just like he needs it to be real, you know, and he needs it to be as big of a threat as he thinks they are, right? So that's the situation with Zombie Man. Drive Knight was a hard one because Drive Knight only has like a few speaking lines and he doesn't really lend a lot to his personality. Um, but uh, despite that, I decided just to go with impulsiveness uh, because he is somebody that attacks all the monsters right away, which is a good thing. But then after he finds out where their headquarters is, uh, before before even considering, you know, discussing this with Child Emperor or the other heroes or trying to get back up. He's just like, where's your headquarters? City Z, gotcha, on it. And he just flies off. Not looking at the bigger picture a lot of times, I think. Not looking at like, okay, Metal uh, Drive Knight, there are... You know, there are monsters appearing all over the world, many of which are demon, even dragon level threats, that lends it to believe that they're all being organized by a greater force. 
So all of these dragon level threats probably have a boss that's even stronger, maybe even a god level threat. It seems like he didn't stop to consider that. It's just like, no, I'm just going to launch head head into their base and just wipe out as many monsters as I can come across. And he probably ran across, you know, uh, you know, Rochi or, you know, G5 or, you know, some people have actually said that Drive Knight might be G5 or he might be a sleeper agent for the organization, connections to to um, Drive Knight, I mean, connections to Metal Knight. There's so many knights in the Hero Association. Connection to Metal Knight, maybe, possibly. Um, there's definitely a, re a relationship between him and Child Emperor, it seems. Maybe Child Emperor created Drive Knight? I'm not exactly sure sure how that went but yeah his was a little bit more difficult so if you have a different angle to take drive night go right ahead uh melvin's list was uh secretiveness you know not wanting to divulge information in the way he was keeping secrets from genos and everything so that that's the way i could see that as well uh number 10 pig god once again i think the most obvious one probably right next to puri puri prisoner pig god represents gluttony uh gluttony and he's still a hero it's not like he just only cares about food he will go out and perform heroing duties but he's obsessed with food, and that's what his power is, is just to eat. He's a fat guy, so doesn't really seem to be, like, that much of a complex character, Pig God, right? And I still love, I said this in the Pig God video, I, I love the backstory for Pig God I crafted, where he didn't take the Hero Association exam or anything, he was just going from town to town, participating in eating contests, and he was in the middle of this hot dog eating contest in, like, City J or whatever, just, oh, oh, no, and then this monster attack occurred at the same time the eating contest was going on but he was so busy gorging he didn't even notice and so the monster went to attack him and he's like hey fatty i'm gonna eat you and then he's just oh, 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 oh what are you doing oh, and he just eats the entire monster still not realizing what's going on and then finishes all of his hot dogs and just lets out a big hearty like Burp. and then all the citizens of the town are just looking at him like did he just eat like a demon level threat monster and not even realize he did it and he's like I was pretty good, so do I win? You know, and then the Hero Association just like, okay, yeah, you're S-Class Hero. I, I I, guess we make you one. He defeated a demon level threat like that. I guess he's S-Class status, you know? I like to think that was his backstory, but anyway, yes. Moving on to uh, number 11, we have Super Alloy Dark Shine, and I went with Confidence, okay? Now, this is getting a little bit into the webcomic, you know, a little bit of spoiler territory, but... He has such a confidence in his muscles, uh, which is a good thing. However, this is a double-edged sword kind of thing because kind of like the, the very strong confidence can kind of like teeter on the, ex on the opposite end. Like only when you're at your highest do you realize you can fall the lowest sort of deal. So he spent years and years and years building up all of this confidence in his body, in his muscles, in his shine. And if he gets defeated or even just gets beaten down, once that high peak of confidence he's at just that that entire mountain just crumbles underneath him and he just falls into just a deep pit of depression all right where he's just like if my muscles weren't good enough i failed you know and so that can be a problem for him so as long as he keeps winning it's no problem all right he loses just once or just gets a solid beating once and it all just disappears um, so, moving on to number 12, who is, oh, where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's here. He's here. Watchdog Man. Watchdog. I went with detachment for Watchdog Man. I was thinking of a few ways to properly articulate this. Uh, isolation, you know, or freedom. Yeah, I, I decided to go with, um, with uh, detachment, okay? Because just for one thing, look at his face. He looks, uh, people have brought up the similarities between him and Saitama, just like the detached like i feel no emotions i feel nothing i'm i just exist and i am strong and people have thought maybe he broke a limiter in a similar way to saitama or he removed his beast limiter or something like that you know I, there's a lot of theories revolving around watchdog man but uh yeah he decided just to be detached from basically the rest of the world even the hero association he just chooses to just stay in his own city in his own little park on his little pedestal Every time a monster comes in, he eliminates it. He doesn't talk to anybody, though. Um, you, you could take pictures of him. He doesn't care, but he's not going to, like, give you an autograph. Like, Watchdog Man, can I have an autograph? It's like, oh, sure, woof, woof, here you go. No, he's just, like, here and just as a sentinel forever guarding the city, completely detached from everybody around him. I can imagine, like, the S-Class probably just made him that because it's just like, okay, Watchdog Man, you become an S-Class hero. And he's just like, hmm. It's like, okay, but you got to come to meetings and stuff he's like mm, okay 
And I'm, I'm guessing the only reason he went to the S-Class meeting uh, because of the prophecy and everything, I'm guessing the only reason is because if the world was going to end, that also includes his city. But he doesn't care. Like, if there was some way for the entire world to be destroyed, but City Q, his home city, would have stayed around, he probably wouldn't have went to that meeting. He would have probably just been like, oh, okay. I can save my city, though. But they were probably talking about some world cataclysm, something like a like a giant meteor. Well, that already happened. But, you know, like the Earth itself exploding. You know, like that was probably what they got him to, you know, to go there for. But other than that, he is completely detached from the world, very much like Saitama in terms of strength. You know, this this really strong being, but seems to really have no enjoyment in the battle itself, you know, so to speak. Okay. All right, so moving on to S rank 13, Flashy Flash. Flashy Flash, I went, I was originally just going to go with straight up ego, but no, narcissism. That is, he's textbook narcissist, okay? Somebody that just thinks they're the best, they're awesome, okay? Now, you might think, oh, isn't that kind of like arrogance with, oh, no, not arrogance with King, arrogance with Tatsumaki. There's, there's a key, there's a few key differences with this, okay? Tatsumaki, I feel like, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna throw her up there now. There's no Tonko Bonds that have flashy flash on the cover. So, Tatsumaki, with her arrogance, she doesn't usually require people to praise her. You know, it's not like Tatsumaki, like, defeats a monster and then, like, all right, masses, praise me because of how cool I am. That's not really her. She's arrogant with her own power, but she's just like, yeah, giant monster, demon, dragon, whatever, crush it, go home. That's her. Um, Flashy Flash really has that personality where he just, like, I want everybody to see how cool I am, and I want everybody to praise me and how cool I am. That's Flashy Flash's personality, okay? Where he, like, walks up to the giant, like, that, um, the hundred-eyed octopus destroying the town, and he's just, like, he, he doesn't say it because he's, like, cool and collected and he's edgy, but he basically was, like, to Death Gatling and everybody there. He's just like, hey, watch me pop all of this monster's eyes in, like, less than two seconds. <laughs> I did it. I'm awesome. And it's funny because that ended up just making it worse because that just ended up pissing off the octopus more and just started destroying more freaking buildings. And Death Gatling's like, you just made it matter. You know, you're just making this worse. And, you know, he just kind of has this expression of just like, hmm. Like, it's like he knows he screwed up, but he can't admit he screwed up. Because he's just like, I just, I need to see how people, how awesome they are. And he always talks about how, like, check out my perfect sword, insta-kill. He named his sword insta-kill. I mean, come on, how much more of a narcissist can you be at that point? You know, it's just like, just like, check out how awesome I am, right? He, you see this multiple times, he always tries to stay this cool collective, he's just like, I'm better than you, and I want you to know that I'm better than you, right? So, yeah, definitely narcissism more for Flashy Flash. I ended up giving ego and pride to somebody else but uh, moving on to genos i do have one for genos where's genos genos is right here so genos uh revenge now not so much than you know now compared to where he was at the beginning of the series but definitely revenge at the very very beginning when he first met saitama he was on a path to becoming a monster quite easily i would imagine because he's just like i need to travel from town to town and find that cyborg and eliminate it in the most fiery cataclysm you've ever seen you know that that's basically and he was very emo and very edgy and that that was Genos at the beginning. Now, ever since meeting Saitama, that's lessened a little bit. It's not like, it seems like Genos is less interested in searching the entire surrounding cities for that cyborg that wiped out his, ha his family. And it seems like he's more interested in just like, I will now wash the dishes and help Saitama go grocery shopping. That is my duty now, which is better, better than revenge. But I would definitely, yeah, he, he was definitely like revenge. You know, that was definitely him at the very beginning of the series. So I would go with Genos there. Uh, number 15, we have uh, Tank Top Master. Okay, Tank Top Master is the one I went with ego or just like excessive amount of pride. Okay, not pride in himself, mind you, but pride in the tank top. And he also has pride in himself. He's somebody that's just like, you know, I will get stronger with my muscles and my men and with the tank top by our side, we'll, we will truly become the, the great fighting force. And at the end of the day, I mean, they're not weak by any stretch of the imagination, but um, they're outclassed by so many other heroes. They're outclassed by Darkshine. They're outclassed by Tatsumaki. They're outclassed by Garo. Um, you know, just there's this, they're, they're buff dudes and they're strong, 
but there's so many more heroes that are physically stronger than them, that have machinery that's stronger than them, that have powers that are stronger than them. There's people that are just, you know, faster than them. So, you know, when it, when it comes to, like, a bodybuilding competition, they would probably win if, you know, Super Ally Dark, Darkshine didn't. So, you know, if it comes to, like, a bodybuilding competition, they would probably win uh, as long as Darkshine doesn't, you know, enter, which he probably would. Uh, you know, but, you know, just they have a little bit more of an ego about it. Like, oh, yes, as long as we put on the tank tops, we're, like, ten times stronger. I'm like, all right, well, I mean, but they're not, you know, they're not the same way with, like, Flashy Flash, where they're like, we want everybody to praise our tank tops, right? We will, we will all force you to join the collective of the tank top. You know, yeah, we, we don't, like, you know, they don't do stuff like that, but, um, yeah, they're, they're, they act more like, kind of like a biker gang in a lot of regards, right? So that, that's, that's Tank Top Master. Um, so for 15, we have Metal Bat. All right, now we talked about Metal Bat extensively in the last video, so I won't go into super detail. At first, I jumped immediately to Rage or Wrath, if you were going to do the Seven Deadly Sins shtick with it. So yes, he has, you know, his baseball bat, and, you know, whenever, you know, the monsters show up, his facial expression changes, and he just goes into this, like, rage and just beats them down. But I also wanted to include the possibility of just, he represents motivation. Or, as he would refer to it as, getting pumped up! You know, just getting motivated. Let's do this! Let's fight! Let's win! You know, and that's a little bit more constructive. A little, little bit better than just pure rage or wrath. Because he isn't pissed off, like, all the time. You know, especially when he's with Zenko. And he could be a rather kind individual. So, I decided to scale back a little bit more for rage and go, which is, like, he represents just, just motivation. You know, unyielding uh, drive. Never give up at it. You know, that's the kind of guy Metal Bat has. Okay, that's that's what he is. Okay. So, and like I said, I made a whole video about him, so you can go and check that out. And then finally, we got S rank 17, bottom of the barrel, Puri Puri Prisoner. Oh, okay. So, I looked around, I'm like, okay, what's the, um, what, what, what's another term for, like, twisted love you know and i really couldn't find anything like it's not not like the opposite of love which would be like hatred or indifference or like apathy not that just he has love it's just extremely extraordinarily aberrant twisted dark kind of love you know like i'm gonna force it kind of you know that kind of shtick with him so yeah i'm just gonna go or you could just the easy explanation was just lust lust he represents lust okay we'll just we'll just stick with the seven deadly sins for him there's probably a few other words you can think of that would fit um you know because it's 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 even funnier because in the most recent chapters we had him fighting against the Anyan and all the other people that got turned into monsters in, you know from the prison and it's like he he keeps gaining new powers that are due to love or or sex toys without that vibration technique <laughs> but uh they're not and he he feels it like it's the purest love ever because he feels him like he's i am an angel and you are my you know you are my loyal lovers but no it's 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 the exact opposite it's the furthest from pure love you can get to right um yeah so it, it it's a running theme with his character it's just it's really jacked up beyond belief guys really messed up yeah. So, uh, yeah, though, there, those are the S class. Those are the S. Like I said, I can't really, I can't really pin anything down on Blast because Blast is just we, we don't know anything about him really. But I wanted to thank Melvin for giving me the idea for this video with his list. Um, and I want to, I want you guys to comment below on what do you think. And maybe he's like, oh, I don't really think you know, Bang represents, uh, you know, uh, responsibility. I think he represents something else. And also explain why. I mean, if you want to, that'd be cool to like, oh, here's what I think about this. Or you're like, hey, Teching, I like most of these but there's another one i really think this guy represents this or move them around because i love those kind of things like i said i love themes and i love looking at like when authors lay themes out for certain characters even if it's not explicit i, I like just trying to like maybe figure it out off to the side right it's it's a cool cool thing to do all right well thanks for watching everybody s class signing out 
do, 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 do. Also, I wanted to throw it out there because I, I came up with this idea for this video a few days ago, but I think yesterday Nux came out with his honest descriptions for S Class. So go watch Nux's video on the honest description for S Class because it's awesome. And there'll be another One Punch Man video coming up rather soon. Um, I was actually talking to Nux about this the other day, and Nux. He doesn't read that far ahead, so he didn't know about this character yet. And so I was explaining this character to him, and I'm just like, I've, I've never seen it, but I'm sure it'll be a good video. And, uh, yeah, th there'll be a video coming soon. Coming soon. Later, everybody.